Today on MSU Inside Out, Marcus sits down with student government president Lindsay Nelson to keep us updated on happenings around campus. There's a new challenge presented by the Wellness Center that keeps working out fun and even more rewarding. Derek has more on the story. A new basketball season approaches and the Lady Beavers coach Sheila Green Girding joins us to talk about the upcoming season. We also have a look into the week that was in sports and a peek at the weather. All this and more starting now on MSU Inside Out. Hello all and welcome to MSU Inside Out. Today is November 1st. I'm Juan Vidal. And I'm Amy Olson. Well, Juan, last night was Halloween. How did you celebrate? I celebrated by sitting down, taking a take-home test, not dressing up at all, and waiting for children to come by uh, and take candy. Only two people showed up, so I have lots of candy to eat the next couple weeks. Well, for those of us that enjoyed some candy or maybe are going to, we might need to um, spark up our fitness regime, Piper. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about how that can help? Well, I know a lot of us ate a little bit too much chocolate, or maybe that was just me, but laughter is one of the best ways to burn off calories, so we can have some fun doing it, or we can do it while having fun at the MSU Fitness Center. I know that Derek Hackett was just there recently and has one of those stories, so we can listen to that now. Um, MSU students are fortunate to have a brand new wellness center this semester. However, the staff is concerned that students might not be using the facility to its full potential. Derek Hackett explains. Filled with walkers, rock walls, and weights, the Minot State Student Wellness Center is up and running this semester. The $15 million project has options for student wellness and the staff has created a way to incorporate them all. We decided to make a bingo card out of all the activities we have in the Wellness Center so that people can get out of their comfort zone and use different parts of the facility that they normally wouldn't use. The idea of Fitness Bingo is attributed to student and staff member Jamie Albright. The card includes various activities such as climbing the rock wall, shooting some free throws, and just lifting weights. And then we have people, we say, go make two out of five free throws in the gym, rent equipment out from the equipment desk, use different machines on different floors and use different tools so that you kind of get more comfortable using the whole building in general. And then we also have prizes if you get a straight bingo. And then if you get a blackout, you go into food drawing for a Timex Iron Man watch. So whether it's trying new things, mastering old skills, or just conquering your fears. I know, but I hate heights. MSU's Health and Wellness Center is not just for physical fitness. Or we have, you know, different things. We try to get the spiritual, the intellectual wellness, kind of cover the entire compass of wellness. So we don't just call it fitness, it's not just about fitness, it's about well-being in general. This round of bingo ends next Monday. The staff hopes students will take part in the contest before it expires and experience the whole facility. For KMSU Channel 19, I'm Derek Hackett. Well, thank you, Derek. And you can pick up your bingo cards at the front desk of the Wellness Center. On a good note, positive steps have been made regarding the three-tier system proposal. Minot State University received an email on Monday from the Chancellor pertaining to hot three-tier topics. Among these were admissions, tuition, flat rate hour plan, and the grandfathering existing students. MSU has been allowed to set its own admission index apart from the regional and research universities. At the request of MSU, the initially designated 1.5 rate for adjacent states and provinces was reduced to 1.25. The per-credit tuition model will be adjusted to be cost-neutral for full and part-time students. Existing students may be grandfathered under the existing tuition waivers under the recommendation of the Chancellor. The interpretation of the grandfathering of the current flat rate model is that current students will continue to receive this rate for up to four years. Again, please remember that this has not been formally approved. Now to celebrate the day after Halloween, we'll end your news segment by reading you the New York Times headline from this day in 1892. The article described how All Hollow Even was undoubtedly reminiscent of pagan times and begins, Druids were accustomed to kindling sacred fires on the eve of November 1st, possibly to ward off evil spirits, as in the popular imagination this has always been considered the high carnival season for witches, fairies, and the immaterial principle of humanity to wander abroad. Now undoubtedly that was the title of today's New York Times. Amy, I'm sure you're an avid New York Times consumer so you can tell us that. I am, but you know, I think I missed that headline today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Piper. 
I'm here today with Rebecca Rosiska. Rebecca, thank you very much for being here today. Rebecca is a research associate at the Rural Crime and Justice Center. And for some people on campus, they might not have heard of the Rural Crime and Justice Center or the RCJC. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do there? Basically, um, we are grant funded, um, but we are affiliated with Minot State. Um, we have several different projects. The, the project that I currently work on is called Grants to Encourage Arrest. It's um, received funding from the Department of Justice and we work with law enforcement in particular to help with domestic violence policies, um, help uh, organize trainings for them that they might be needing. And we've actually um, looked particularly at the Northwest region, which is oil country. And another project that we do with the RCJC is re uh, Rural Methamphetamine Education Program. And what they do is, per request, we'll go into schools and communities and offer um, needed education and awareness on various drugs. They used to really focus on meth, um, as is in the title, but they have now been um, allowed to go into other drugs and we're seeing um, higher numbers in synthetic drugs, which is uh, an area that they plan to focus on in the next few years. Well, it sounds like they have a busy um, schedule and a lot on their plate, and something to help them out with that will be the Department of Justice grant they just received for $300,000. And that grant will help go towards reducing domestic and dating violence, sexual assaults, and stalking on campus. And how are you a part of receiving that grant? Well, actually, um, the process is pretty stringent. Um, we started with writing a proposal in spring this year, and had to wait and find out this fall that we actually did receive the grant. Um, I just found out that we were one of um, 22 uh, universities that received funding, but the competitive field it was up near 100 that applied for the grant. Um, it is three years, it's for 300,000. We focus just on Minot State, but we could have, if we wanted to, do a consortium, um, which might be something we look at in the future. Well, a big congratulations to you and the RCJC. Thank you. And how is MSU going to put these dollars to use? Well, basically, we've, we uh, put together five goals. And so those are kind of the initiatives that we'll be looking at over the next three years. Um, one area is to look at our ca um, campus policies and procedures. And it's a really nice time for this project to be in place because of our new security. And so this will be a nice way to introduce um, new ways of um, looking at how to investigate or respond to sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking on campus. But we'll also be collaborating with our local law enforcement and our crisis center and really looking at how do we all work together to respond to these crimes. Um, the other areas we're focusing on is training um, because that'll be key and not just training for those responding but also for administrators so they know um, what are the policies going to say and um, how should they be responding because we don't want students um, to be afraid to be on campus if they're a victim or for um, the offender if it's a student to think that they can be just um, not held accountable on campus as well. Well, it looks like we can all look forward to a safer campus. Thank you very much for being here today, Rebecca. Thank Coming you. up next, we have Derek, who's going to be telling us a little bit about the weather. It's been a cold first day of November so far, and the weekend looks a little bit chillier. But next week, the temperatures might rise a bit. Stay tuned for my full forecast right after Sports with Shane. Thank you to our underwriters. MSU Red and Green, Minot State University's weekly newspaper. Nice impressions for all your printing and marketing needs, where you will meet nice people and will be impressed with your printing. MSU Theater, we strive to be vigilant. Minot State University Athletic Department, Go Beavers! MidwestOilJobs.com. Find your dream job in the Bakken. Me Mexico, located at 301 40th Avenue Southwest, 
authentic Mexican cuisine. I Keating Furniture World, where exciting things are always happening. Fiance Bridal, located downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Digital Office Center, Minot's Xerox headquarters. KIZZFM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. 97 Kicks FM, today's hot new country. KZPR FM, Minot's rock station, 105.3 The Fox. KMXA FM, Minot's best music mix, Mix 99.9. KCJB AM, 910 AM, Minot's News and Information Station. Walmart on South Broadway for tremendous opportunities and growth. Sodexo, for food, service, and catering, located in Minot State University. Minot State University Art Department, featuring galleries across the Minot State campus. If you're just now joining us, still to come on MSU Inside Out is Sports with Shane Court, weather with Derek Hackett, Juan's interview with some MSU football mm -hmm. players, but first we have Marcus Hendrickson with a little entertainment news. Yep, I guess he was uh, looking for the inner workings of MSU student life and he figured uh, to get that, why not go to the heart of student government? Marcus, what do you have for us? Thanks guys. Joining me here today is the president of the Student Government Association, Lindsay Nelson. Thank you for being with us today. It's nice to see you today, Marcus. Thank you. Students who wanted to get involved on campus usually join SGA, and that's what you did. But you also aspired to a bigger roles, which made you decide to run for president, and now you are the president. Can you just talk to us a little bit about what made you decide to join SGA and how it's such a big part of your life? I'm a third generation Minot State University student. My grandpa graduated and my mom. So um, coming to Minot kind of became a no-brainer um, with the history here just with my family to start. Um, I came here as a freshman, not really sure if this is where I wanted to be or if it's what I wanted to do, but after a year, I had strong ties with my professors, strong ties with good friends, and I got to see how everyone um, is so caring here on campus, and I really felt like I wanted to pursue um, more here and that I wanted to become more involved. Now, the SGA plays a strong role in events here on campus, from student clubs and organizations to even the big homecoming that happens every year. Can you tell us about what you've accomplished so far this year? Well, to start out with, homecoming was great this year. Our co-directors, um, one was Callie Cook. She did just a fantastic job, as and the rest of our Senate, too. It was really a time for me to just brag about everyone, because they um, all put in so much effort to making it successful. Um, as far as other activities, we've had dances, we've had uh, comedians that I know they've had to move the location because so many students have come to. Um, next week on election night, we're having a political pizza party and um, we'll broadcast the election results. We'll have pizza, we'll have some games, a photo voting booth. So it should be fun. We have little things like that all year long that help students you know, have something to do on nights. Now, on a different note, one of your initiatives as president that you talked about that you wanted to finalize was the Student Grades Consortium. Can you tell us where the progress of that is at right now? That project really took a standby with um, the three-tier proposal, now named Student Pathways to Success. Um, it is a goal of ours still to help develop the academic climate on campus. Uh, Max Buchholz, last year's president, is still a senator this year, so he has... Um, He's, he will be helping us reach our goal with that, but it will just be a matter of whether it's this semester or next semester. But it's definitely going get, to get done within the near future? Th that's a goal of ours, of course. Um, it might take up until next year. It's a work in progress. And finally, through joining SGA, you've gotten a hands-on experience and hands-on look at Minot State and the campus itself. Many feel that there still could be or still is a disconnect between the campus and the students. What do you see is happening as far as closing that gap and getting more students involved on campus? Well, this year we bounced back from the flood. It's been obvious on campus. There's been just a buzz 
yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning people were playing pool in the beaver dam that's something that never happened last year um the energy coming back off of last year's deficit and um just how sad it was has taken a spin on its own i really feel that campus is developing and gr will continue to grow now that we're rebuilding from the flood bouncing back um we have our division two athletics that are now coming to bring the campus together and that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I really feel now in my position, I've seen a lot of support from the administration at the school, the faculty, the staff, and I really think that they have the students in their best interest. So, That was the president of the Student Government Association here on campus. You can catch all the events that they have coming up the rest of the semester on their Student Government Association bulletin boards all throughout campus. So. Look for those, and let's toss it back to the hosts in the studio. Thank you, Marcus. I'm here with Cameron Stone, a sophomore here at Minot State, and Josh Zimmer, a junior. They're both uh, football players. They both play D-line. Um, how are you guys doing today? Doing good. How are you? Doing Pretty good. good. Cold good. practice today? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I, I, I see here that you're both from Great Falls, Montana. First of all, I love Great Falls, Montana. It's absolutely beautiful. My dad was stationed there uh, for a couple years. Um, what, did you know each other before you got here? <laughs> well, I'll go and take. I mean, we we always competed with each other in mm -hmm. sports, whether it was football, basketball, even wrestling. Growing up in mm -hmm. like pee wee league stuff, but uh, we always were kind of at the competition because we were opposite sides of the city. Mm -hmm. Seems yeah. like seems like whatever it is, we were always on the opposite team until finally the college level, and it's a whole different scenario mm -hmm. coming on and playing with him versus playing against him mm -hmm. the entire time. So do you guys, do you guys have a little bit of uh, like competition between you two? Uh, I mean, is one trying to one up the other? <laughs> there's there's yeah. definitely a little of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd have to say that. I mean, you always want to do better. Of course. And making it even better, trying to go against Cameron and making my stats better it just, <laughs> just makes me uh, that much more uh, competitive. Uh, uh, were you guys surprised to see each other on the, on the recruitment list? Well, actually, I kind of, I think, now, Josh will second me here, yeah. but he was kind of the one that initially wanted to go to Minot, okay. and I was kind of a, wasn't a for sure um, school for me, but then I came here and really liked it, and so he kind of drove in the fact that, oh, you only came here because of me and all this, <laughs> and he always holds that above, that he's always <laughs> the first one, Yeah, but uh, it's, it's, all, like, it's all in good fun. Yeah. I mean, and, and unfortunately, both of you guys are, are, are out right now. Yeah. Um, both of you are starting at the beginning of the year, if I'm correct. Uh, uh, Josh, what kind of what injury uh, set you back this this season? Um, you know, we just had a small uh, shoulder problem, and uh, luckily, I, you know, I f uh, found out the information, and it's nothing that I need surgery on. So it's just a lot of rehab. But um, unfortunately, I will be done for the rest of the year. But I'm gonna, you know, rehab hard and mm -hmm. you know hit the off season. Um, fully motivated and you know get ready for next season so you're not going to get a chance to play this this upcoming saturday unfortunately like not like um unfortunately not um i'm trying to still talk to you know try and get everybody convinced and uh, my coaches and the trainers and see if i can't try and strap it up against bemidji so mm -hmm. That's kind of a on process right now. Two games left. I guess it's always a day to day, especially with salt shoulders. Yeah. Uh, Cameron, what happened to you? Me, it was happened uh, against uh, Northern State, um, the Coyotes there down in uh, Aberdeen, mm -hmm. and basically just I kind of had a little bit of injury to my knee the week before, but didn't think anything serious of it, mm -hmm. and was going to try to sack the quarterback on a play, and just came around the corner too hard, and my knee kind of buckled in Oof. like a hyperextension, and. Mm -hmm. Didn't think anything was torn. Yeah. Thought I'd be back the next week and got the MRI and I tore my ACL. So Oof. that is that done is for the rest life. of the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've uh, been battling injuries before. Uh, do you yeah. have the red shirt? Yeah. No, I only have the one red shirt okay. as of last year. But uh, but seems to be like an <laughs> oncoming thing every year. You get through the middle of the season and something happens. Yep. Uh, and you guys are coming off a two win streak or off a two wins. It's officially a streak at two. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. We'll take that. Um, uh, what's the energy in the locker room like? Like, like what's, what's the whole feeling of the team coming, uh, going through this last uh, quarter of the year? Um, defensively, I think we're definitely motivated. Um, offensively, um, I think you're starting to see all the young guys start to grow up a little bit. Um, as coach used to tell us, you know, the, the pups are finally learning how to bark. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just camaraderie. We're getting, you know, we're all getting comfortable with each other. I mean, we're all a big family. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, with, with this streak going two games and hopefully three, you know, mm -hmm. coming this Saturday against 
St. Cloud, um, you know, we're just going to keep working on that. But it's been great so far the entire season. So, well, what what can we expect expect uh, over these last two games? Well, it'll definitely be a fight. Um, I mean, that's kind of something that we've seen this entire season enter in the new conference. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really think we're starting to come around. Like, we are young. We're mm -hmm. a young team yeah. all around yeah. in every aspect. But I think people are starting to get the hang of it, starting to get some com camaraderie around with all the players, and mm -hmm. kind of just starting to enjoy the game and play it for fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, uh, with, uh, with football looking up, uh, looking up uh, they are now 3-6 uh, and six in conference play. Um, I'd say that's it's not too bad for your first time in the uh, in the Northern Sun Collegiate Conference. Mm -hmm. no. um, but uh, from football, we're going to shift over to soccer here. I heard that the the lady soccer girls just came off a, a huge win this uh, yesterday. Yeah, huge win in the quarterfinals. Uh, they head to Mankato State on Friday. Uh, Zoe Fisher had a really good game last night. Zoe I'll get Fisher's into that. A beast. Yeah, huge, <laughs> really good player. <laughs> I'll get into that right now. The Mind State soccer team defend their home turf Wednesday night with a thrilling 2-1 victory over the University of Mary Marauders. It was the first ever playoff game for the ladies as the win pushes them to the semifinals in the Northern Sun Soccer Tournament. Mind State jumped out to an early 1-0 lead when sophomore Zoe Fisher collected her own rebound and netted her 10th goal this season in the 6th minute. The ladies stayed aggressive as in the 21st minute Tara McPartland scored on a wonderfully placed corner kick from Fisher. It was her 4th goal this season and her 4th goal in the last 4 games. Games. It took until the second half for U of Mary to answer as Alex Bachman Williams found the net in the 61st minute for the Marauders. All hopes of a comeback were shut down by the Beavers as they held on for a 2-1 victory. With the win, the Lays advanced to play against Minnesota State University, which is the top-ranked team in the conference. Zoe Fisher believes if the team sticks to their game plan, they can make it to the finals. Um, it all started by the team, great work, Made, uh, managed to get a corner and it was over hit and then our girls just battled and battled to get the ball back in the box repeatedly and then it came to me and I just hit the keeper and I kept just rebounding it was just a, just the thing of just trying to get it in the back of the net which I did. Um, they're going to bring a really good game, they always do. I mean we played them earlier in the season, didn't have much luck but coach has got some great ideas for it and we just got to look forward to hopefully get the win there. The Beers and Mavericks will have their rematch this Friday starting at 2 p.m. in Mankato, Minnesota. The Mind State football team not only got their first road win of the season, but also extend their winning streak to two with a 31-10 victory over Minnesota State Moorhead. The Beavers raced to a 10-0 lead thanks to an interception by Chad Marshall, which set up Aaron Ledoux with a 23-yard field goal, then a poor punt set up Glenn Burrell with a 23-yard touchdown run. After the team's traded touchdowns to start the second half, Monnet's freshman running back Rendell Barber took over. He scored from one yard out to cap a six-play, 69-yard drive to give the Beavers a 24-10 lead and then scored on a 17-yard run late in the fourth quarter to ice the game. Barber finished with 93 yards, rushing on 15 carries and two touchdowns. Kuna was again efficient as he went 13 for 18 for 149 yards passing. The defense also was big for the Beavers as they were credited with five sacks and had two interceptions on the day. The major contributor was 2-4 Brett Moore as he ended with a career-high 14 tackles, also had half a sack and an interception. His great day led him to win the Northern Sun Defensive Player of the Week honors. The Beavers will look to extend their winning streak to three as they return home for a Saturday clash with St. Cloud State in the home finale at Herb Parker Stadium. Game time is 1.30. The start of November means the kickoff to college basketball. That means the start for our men's and women's basketball teams. Our very own Francesca DeAngelis sat down with Coach Green in this week's Coach's Report. Well, you know, you just got to keep on keeping on. Um, you know, things happen and you just got to move forward and hopefully we'll have some young kids um, play up to their capabilities and maybe above and beyond that this year. Um, we're running the Princeton offense, um, which is something that gives you a little better spacing and your players can play out of it a little bit like motion, but yet they have an idea of where they're supposed to be and where they go according to where everybody else goes. So um, I think we're going to get some good things out of it. Uh, we played against some junior colleges this last weekend and we really liked what we saw. And now we're going to step it up as high as we can go and play a couple Division 1s uh, this coming weekend. So 
Um, kind of look at this weekend as, you know, win or lose, we're coming back 0-0. Zero zero. Uh, they don't count on our win-loss record. They're great games for us to go out and compete about the, uh, against the best competition possibly that we'll see all year and uh, see a, a little bit of a measuring stick of where we're at. The ladies head out on the road this weekend as they play Montana State University on Sunday, then play University of Montana on Monday. So, Amy, it's November, and you know what that means, right? All Saints Day? Uh, close. Movember. And two of the teams on campus are doing it. Baseball and hockey. And I'm part of baseball, so I'll be repping a mustache every week, looking really good. I know, Amy, you're interested in mustaches, so, you know. <laughs> well, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Maybe the mustache will help keep you warm with some of the cooler weather that we're going to be experiencing soon? I sure hope so. <laughs> Derek, what can we expect with upcoming weather? Well, it's going to be cold. We're looking at a, um, a bit of a storm coming in tonight and till tomorrow night. So it's not going to be the most ideal weather for us um, unless you have a mustache. But let's go over to the KMSU weather board and check that out. Current t conditions right now in the Magic City, 30 degrees. However, with the wind, it does feel like 20 degrees. Not the most comfortable for any of us right now, but there are some Clouds covering it up as the sun's trying to peek through right before we have a winter storm. As we look towards Friday now, like I said, a winter storm will be coming in tonight and it should last throughout tomorrow, uh, giving us 40% chance of winter precipitation, mostly rain, but some sleet, possibly some snow with our high at 38, low at 26. Same story throughout the state, 50% in Grand Forks, 30% in Fargo, high of 37 over there, even on the western side of the state, getting some wintry precipitation as well. Dickinson, 30%. Williston, 30%. As we look towards Friday night, uh, Friday night, same story. The winter precipitation should continue 50% in Minot as we look towards Saturday. Saturday, a little bit uh, better. 20% chance in Minot uh, with um, a high of 36, mind you. And then 30% chance in both Fargo and Grand Forks. And then we get to Saturday night. Clouds and the weather should dissipate um, a little bit on Saturday night here. Uh, 27 degrees is our high during the evening, along with most of the state here. Williston, uh, just a little bit lower at 26. Sunday, we are looking at much better weather now. 40, mid, mid to lower 40s for Minots here. 42 is our high with some sun peeking through the clouds, uh, along with uh, Bismarck at a high of 44. So we look at Sunday night. Sunday night, 33, clouds across the state as well. As we look towards our extended forecast for the rest of the week, Monday, nice day, 53 degrees is our high. And on Tuesday, we're looking at 46, but it will be breezy. And then Wednesday, 42 degrees. So I'd keep that mustache rolling if I was you guys. Hopefully the breeze doesn't get through it. <laughs> That's the worst. Thanks, Derek. Absolutely. A way to keep the chill away tonight is to stay inside and go to the women's volleyball game tonight at 7 o'clock versus Minnesota St. Cloud University. Another event at 7 o'clock tonight is the Battle of the Bands. That will be taking place in the Beaver Dam. And they have good bands in there. Uh, at least one or, four, one or two of them are normally good. Yes, they do. All right, today's song of the week is The Blonde, Bad, and Beautiful by Airborne. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 